In this video, we're going to show you how you can work out the best cut settings for your laser in Lightburn. Hi, my name is Gil, and in this Lightburn Hints video, we're going to look at how you can work out the best cutting settings for your laser. I'll be using my Emblazer 2 diode laser for this tutorial, but you can use this method with any laser that you're using. All you need to do is adjust the settings depending on the power and speed settings for your specific laser. Regardless if you're using a diode or CO2 laser, being able to work out the most effective settings for your laser is going to make things easier on your wallet and time. Now this is not going to be a one-shot deal. Depending on the material that you're working with, you might want to use this procedure to work out the settings. Every material has a different threshold when it comes to power and speed. But once you've done this test a few times, you might surprise yourself at how fast you can tune in your laser. Now before we jump straight into Lightburn, let me quickly invite you to hit that subscribe button and bell icon so you don't miss out on any of the upcoming hints and tutorials based around Lightburn. And I would love it if you could come along to the laser live streams that we host on this channel. Over there, you can actually show off your successful projects and meet other fellow laserologists who are exploring what they can do with lasers. The link to the group is in the description below, and I look forward to seeing what you create with your laser. Okay, let's jump into Lightburn so we can explore how you can tune in your laser to cut material in the best way possible. So this is one of the most requested tips that I've been asked over the last couple of months. A lot of people have come up to me and asked me, they said, Gil, great, we love your tutorials. Just we want to know how to be able to work out the material settings for something that isn't listed in the Lightburn library. So over here, you can see we've got the Lightburn library. On the Emblazer 2, there's actually a list of material that is recommended for the laser. If you're using a different laser, you may have material libraries like that. If not, you would want to create your own material libraries with all the different settings so you don't have to come into the cut layers every time. Let's say we've got a square here and then we've got to open it up and start typing in. Well, I remember that was kind of 1200 power eh, was 52 and it gets messy. So if you haven't been introduced to it before, check out this video that I have all about the materials library. It goes through how to actually create your own different materials within the library, how to modify settings, how to create your own new settings. You can check out this video with the link that's right here. But what we're going to do now is actually work through how to go ahead and find the correct settings so that you can add them into the material library with whatever piece of material that you want. Now the real trick to effective laser use is to be able to go and work out two key settings and that happens to be your speed and your power. Those two things combined will actually allow you to create the fastest job possible with the results that you want. I know some people might have a laser that's 40 watt, 80 watt, you can crank up that power, you can just punch through whatever material you want. But in, in a lot of ways, there's some setbacks to just cranking up the power. One is you're pushing your laser element a lot harder than you possibly need to. You may also be running the job a lot slower or faster than you need. Being able to find that sweet spot in your laser will also allow you to not only get the jobs done quickly, but also less stress on your machine. And I don't know about you, but I want my machine to keep working because without it, I'm not able to get my jobs done. So right now we're gonna go forward and work out how to work out the sweet spot for both your speed and your max power. There are many different ways people do this. I'm gonna show you the way I was taught and I use this quite often. Let's go through the methodology first and then we're gonna apply it to a project. So I'm gonna just quickly select this guy, get rid of him. Now, when you actually are working on a project, there are two main shapes that your laser is going to try to create. The first one is a area, I'm just gonna turn this to black so you guys can see it, is areas that have really sharp turns. And in this case, we've got a 45 degree sharp corner which if you're doing signage, if you're doing photos, you will definitely be able to use a lot of that, those kind of shapes. And we use them all the time. You can grab these shapes, you can create new shapes out of it. The, I guess the issue that I'm trying to share with you here is even if you make a shape that's like this design, you have these really sharp turns. 
And that's one of the areas where if your laser is not dialed in correctly, you may lose the effect and the result that you actually want, especially when you're cutting through material. The other shape that you will use a lot are curves, especially in circles like this. So you've got a laser and the laser head is moving, let's say in a clockwise area. What we're actually finding is that as the laser head is moving around, it's changing both the X and Y geometry in the work area. And again, you wanna make sure that that's dialed in so that you're getting the cleanest cut possible. So this is the shape that I use to test out my speed and power. Let me get rid of these, both these guys and introduce you to what I call the cutting bullet. So I start off with a square and then I grab a circle and by holding down the shift key when I do this, I actually create kind of a little bit like a bullet shape. These two elements, I'm just gonna make this a little bit smaller because we don't need it that big. These two elements combined will allow me to test these speed and power settings. And if I can get a clean cut using this shape, I know I'm in business. I'm gonna weld these things together by using the weld tool and this shape, I'm going to just make it as small as possible. You don't need a big shape to actually test this out. If you've got lots of material that you're cutting, you might want to actually make an array so you can test different speeds, make it as small as possible on a piece of material. And then what I do is I select that piece of material, come into the cut layers editor, make sure that it's online, which it is. You can see here it's actually on three passes. As I said, I use a diode laser. This method you can use on a diode CO2 if you wanna try cutting with a fiber, but I know a fiber doesn't really cut, or any type of laser, the methodology works right across the board. I'm actually going to use a piece of cardboard that was given to me when I was working at a school. I believe they were used to keep tests flat so the students wouldn't see the questions beforehand. Now this material, as you can see, is kind of like a, it's a whole lot of fiber squished. So I know that this is a real fibrous material. Why that's important is the fact that this material will need to be really precisely cut. There will be some fibers that won't cut as easily as others. And it's a little bit like MDF. If you've ever put MDF in a diode laser or if you've cut it on a CO2 laser at a very low power or really, really quickly, you'll sometimes find that you've got to do another pass because some areas are not as equally manufactured when they were making the material. I've cut this before. I know that it can cut, but I don't remember the settings at all. And I'm actually going to cheat it a little bit. I know it's paper. So I'm going to go into the library settings here and I see this corrugated card. It says three mil six mil. I'm going to try putting these results in first or these settings, not results. Hopefully we'll get the results. This corrugated card, three mil line. We're going to sign it to layer. Now I know this card is only a one mil. So I'm going to go to the material and the first thing I'm going to do is change it to one mil. So I know it's in focus, pull up this cut settings editor and these settings are already talking to me. What I can see here is that first of all, we need two passes to cut the material. Uh, the speed is at 300, so it's going quite slow and the max, max power is at 100. We've also got the air assist on. Interesting, in these cases, I actually turn the air assist off simply because on my machine, my air assist is so powerful. Sometimes if I don't use tabs, it'll knock it out. But you know what? I'm gonna keep it on, why not? That's what's recommended. I'm going to assign those at 300. Thank you so much. I'm actually gonna grab this piece. I'm gonna hit Command D and duplicate it. I'm just gonna move it up here. And in fact, you know what? Why am I doing it that way? Why don't we do it the smart way? Let's use the array tool, good old array tool. And we want to put another one. We're gonna do four tests. Now, I'm gonna select the second one. I'm gonna put it on the next layer. I'm gonna grab it, grab the uh, third one, put it on the third layer. And we're gonna also do that for the fourth layer. So I've got four separate layers. This one's a fill, I'm gonna change it to a line and I can see here, I've got to do some adjustments. So the next one is 200. I actually like that, the assist is on, but we're gonna make it to two passes. We're just gonna make sure, we'll see if that works. Now, it's 200, 300. I'm gonna do the next one at 100. So we're gonna call the speed 100. We're slowing it all the way down. We're gonna make the max speed power though, max power, Gil, 102. 
And I'm actually going to... I'm going to keep it at two passes. Let's keep it at two passes. And this last one, I'm feeling this a little bit. I'm going to... It's potluck. So let's see what happens. We're going to go 100. But we're going to bring this down to 200. And we're going to do it at three passes. I just want to see whether or not it's going to work well or not. Let me just see. We've got... It doesn't like... Ah, a little bit of a bug there. That's okay. We'll let Jason know. Because I have different results on different layers, I'm going to just use the text here and I'm going to put in 300 by 100 by 2. We'll be able to see the result. I'm just going to change that to a, another layer just because that's going to be text. And you know what? We don't need it to be 110. We can go that really fast. So we'll go 2000. All we need to do is actually just mark it. I'm just going to double check that we've all got them on two passes. That's correct. So let's grab this again. We'll duplicate it. We'll move it up here. Our second one is going to be 200. Excellent. Deselect it. On our third one, I'm just going to check again. We are still on two layers. We'll make that 100. And we'll just quickly select that again and duplicate it. And I believe that this is a 200 layer. But that's three passes. So now that we've created this, we can send this to the laser. This way we've got a grid that we'll be able to work with and find out what those results are. So let's send this to the laser. We're gonna come back and we'll take a look at those results. So we have a number of things here with the results. You can see here that at 300 millimeters per minute, we at 100% power for the diode laser. And with two passes, we have a piece that's still there. It didn't come all the way through. So that, that one's a little bit like a, uh, you know, it, they didn't work out. But at 200 right here, that went through 200 mils at 100%, obviously 100. Given the fact that it's moving slower, it definitely cut through. And in fact, it cut through on the two. And then we actually cut through as well at the 200 mils per minute, 100. We actually added a three, we just did it as a guess. So all of these three worked. To be honest with you, I would continue this test. What I would be looking at now is I would make another row here and I would be actually looking at the space between the 200 and the 300 mils per minute. So I'd be thinking about testing 250 at 100 by 2, see if that cuts through. I'd actually also be looking at seeing whether or not we can get 200 at one in one pass. See if that works. That would, is actually where I want to aim at for the results. And I just keep refining. I keep putting the material in. I keep running these tests. You can see how clean these tests are. They all came out really, really well. And once I've actually got that result, I can then create my own settings for that piece in the material library so that every time I put this piece of material in, we have that result. I already have results in the sense of 200 mils per minute by 100 by two. If I was going to do job right now, that works really well for me. It's all about how much you want to refine it so that you can get your laser to work as a tightly honed machine as opposed to just running power and powering through. All right, now you can set up your project settings to cut material in the fastest time possible. You can also let me know how this process goes as well as any other areas within Lightburn you might want help with in the comments below. Now I'm gonna go and put the finishing touches on some of my laser projects. So while I do that, 
feel free to check out some of these laser tutorials and project videos right here. And I can't wait to see the amazing things that you're going to make with your laser. See you soon with the next Lightburn Hints video.